Good afternoon to all the viewers and welcome back to ICA Live, World Class Culinary Online. Today we have the third session in the series of webinars on coffee from bean to cup, and it's all about milk-based coffee beverages. I will now hand over to our host, Shanaz Raja, Director of Courses at the ICCA Dubai. Over to you, Shanaz. Thank you, Karun. Hello, everyone. Last week, the webinar on milk-based beverages was good, but unfortunately, uh, the reception, many of our viewers complained about poor reception, so we've decided to redo it with you. And uh, as always, Gihan has requested that the questions be posted at the end of the webinar. So do keep typing them into the chat as you go, and I will collect them and post them to him. Over to you, Gihan without wasting too much time. Thank you very much, Shinaz, again. Okay, so we are at episode three, part two, or take two. So again, uh, talk about the milk-based beverages. So I'm sure still today, most of you, when you go to a cafe, when you're having coffee, you always like to add some milk into your drink, or you always go for a cappuccino, latte, or flat white. So to get your drinks right, let's see what are the perfect milk techniques. So before we talk about the milk techniques, what we're going to touch upon on the varieties of the milk. So if you go back 10, 15 years back, you go into any coffee shop, but you find it only one type of milk and it was cow's milk. And it came in three different uh, fat contains. So you got the full fat, the low fat and the skim milk. But now the trends have been moving more into the plant-based milk. So there's varieties of milk when you go into the coffee shop so there's some milks have been uh, there for so many years so if you see soya so the only option what you had few years back is if you have the lactose intolerance we are 65 percent of the global population having the lactose intolerance so some of them they know it some of they don't know even know that they have lactose intolerance so what happened if you have lactose intolerance you might have bloating, you might have certain uh, skin conditions, and once you have the coffee, you feel it, you are really full. So the alternatives are, okay, soya milk, it's one, have been there, but it's slightly into more on the sweeter side. Then in recent days, there have been coconut milk, there have been almond milk, there have been rice milk, and there have been oat milk. For me, from the plant-based milk, my favorite is uh, the oat milk. The reason is, if you take soya milk, it has slightly more of sweet notes and it's a little bit more light in the cup, it more into the flat side. The coconut milk, okay, there's slightly oiliness. Again, there's slightly more sweetness compared to cow's milk. So it a little bit overpowers the coffee flavor. But oat milk, it's perfect. It really enhances the flavors of coffee when you blend it with uh, the coffee. So. If you are a plant-based uh, milk drinker or if you have lactose intolerance, the perfect milk for you, it will be oat milk. Trust me and try it today. When we being this part of uh, the world, Middle East, a lot of people talk about camels. So yes, there's camel milk in uh, some stores as well. Camel milk has a slightly more saltiness comparing to all the plant-based milk and the cow's milk the hero for today so if you drink any coffee with camel milk or if you try to make a, a coffee with camel milk always that saltiness hits the coffee and you get a overpowered taste of saltiness but i know some of you maybe you are very uh, familiar with the flavor of the camel milk and your palate have adjusted to the camel milk so if you like that salty flavor always camel milk another perfect uh, milk to have with the coffee so now we're going to our main product or the hero, it's the cow's milk, what we have been drinking for so many years. So have you thought like, okay, what cow's milk made from? So the cow's milk, what you normally consume, 87.7% of the cow's milk, it contains water. And around 4.9% counts for the lactose and 4.4 to 4.8, it will be the fat containing full fat milk. So the milk that I use today has, has around 4.4% uh, fat percentage and the protein is around 3.3. And the 
minerals it count for 0.7 percent from the cow's milk so when it comes to cow's milk another important thing is we have to talk about the temperatures so when you're making any milk beverage you have to write the hit the right notes of the temperatures to get the full flavor out of the milk so if your milk is in the right temperature always it's going to taste more sweet it's going to be more palatable it's going to be more creamy and it's will be easily blending with all the coffee flavors so at this point when we start the first thing is the milk temperature so the magical numbers are for milk the perfect temperature it should be anything from 60 to 65 celsius if you want to choose a number between 6 to 65 my favorite number is 63 where it really gives that sweetness to the milk it's really sweet it's really creamy so for me personally when i'm frothing milk heating milk texturing milk what we're going to talk shortly the perfect temperature what i'm trying to hit all the time is 63 celsius so if you're hitting the right notes of the milk always 60 to 65 and the number what you should never reach or exceed is 70. so in seven uh, in celsius it's 70. why you should not exceed the 70 percent mark or the 70 celsius mark is reason once you hit the 70 it's going to burn all the proteins of the milk the flat starts reacting in a different way it's going to burn all the minerals so the end product what's going to be happen it's going to see or feel very flat in the cup it's not going to have that sweetness aroma wise it might have aroma notes of uh, uh, burnt rubber kind of aromas it might have uh, egg, egg, egg kind of uh, flavor so it's not very palatable or it's not very uh, good to have in the cup and maybe some of you go to a cafe and ask like okay can I have my coffee extra hot so if you're having extra hot coffee this is one area you should focus off if you having milk what's boiled or steamed or froth over 70 celsius what you're having is not perfect for your coffee so then we'll talk about the top tips or what you should add up when you are uh, frothing or steaming milk so the first tip is when you are frothing steaming milk always try to have the milk what's very cold so when i say very cold you're looking at milk what has a temperature anything from two to four celsius so that means it's direct from the fridge so you have more time to practice your frothing or steaming to hit those right marks with the lower pressure. So then when you are frothing steaming milk to make sure your temperature is right, you use a tool called thermometer. So this comes in Celsius and sometimes it comes in Fahrenheit as well. So in this, uh, this uh, thing, if you see, I'm not sure if you can uh, get it yeah Python thank you you see the red and the green so always you're trying to say in the green area you should never touch red so once you touch the red area that means you have start burning all the proteins minerals and the calcium from the milk so if you talk how talking about uh, Fahrenheit you're looking at anything from 150 to 155 Fahrenheit and if you're looking at Celsius you look for 60 to 65 Celsius. So either you can buy thermometers or there are temperature strips as well. So what you do, you buy one of those strips, you can buy always online, you put it in a side, and once the temperature rise in the jug, it will change the color. So if it's in the right temperature, always it will read as green. And if you exceed in temperature, it will turn red. So these are some tools what you can buy from the market and what you can use. So if you don't have any tools, you have the perfect tools with you, your fingers. So these are the most accurate thermometers if you practice them. So I have been practicing uh, my fingers to uh, read the temperature for the past 20 years. So my most accurate thermometer is this finger. So this finger, look for this finger when I'm making coffee, always you will see it's in the jug. So when you're holding the jug or if you're using a thermometer, the finger, once it reads a certain temperature, your finger will be saying, okay, that's the right temperature, stop. So for this, you have to practice. So I was pra practicing with the thermometer first. I calibrated, now I'm ready to go. So before we go to the coffee machine, we'll uh, talk about some different milk 
technique. So maybe you have heard about uh, cappuccinos. Maybe this is what you drink every day. Or maybe you have heard about macchiato. Or maybe you have uh, heard about mochaccino, where you get a drink what has slightly frothiness, more froth than other drinks. So when you're creating these drinks, the milk technique, what you use is you use the frothing technique. So what you do is you try to increase the volume of the milk. So always when you frothing steaming milk, another rule what you have to uh, follow is always take milk less than half, but slightly more than one third. The reason for this is when you frothing, I said you basically you double the volume. So if you take half and if you try to double it, you will not have control over your jug. So but if you take one third and double, you still have some space to play with. So always take less than half, slightly more than one third when you're taking milk. So when you're frothing, your steamer will be sli uh, slightly lower in uh, the milk. So you're looking at around one centimeter below the surface of the milk. I will demonstrate very shortly. So if you're a cappuccino drinker, if you're a mochaccino drinker, if you're a macchiato drinker, this will be the most important technique for you to get your drink right. And if you are a person who drinks cafe latte or cafe ole, we have a slightly different technique for this, what you call steaming milk. So in this technique, what happened, you don't increase much in the volume, but you get that steam in. You try, the tem uh, you try to get that right temperature into the milk. So the milk becomes more thicker and it gives more sweetness into the milk. So when it blends with the coffee, it gives those perfect conditions or perfect flavors or perfect aromas, what you looking for. So if you're a latte drinker, the technique what you should look for is the steaming technique. So steam arm wise, when you're steaming milk, what you do is your steam arm will be slightly more deeper than frothing milk. So you're looking at slightly either in the middle of the milk or you're looking at one centimeter above from the bottom of the jug when you steaming milk. Now, the third technique, what a lot of you will be interested in, a lot of you uh, uh, will want to know it's uh, the texturing technique. So it sounds nice comparing to frothing and steaming. And the other thing is in texturing, if you're into latte art, if you are a flat white drink, if you want to learn latte art, if you want to pour those latte art, the technique what you have to master is the texturing technique. So the texturing technique, it's something between the frothing and steaming. So it's not frothy as the milk what you make for cappuccino or a mochaccino. You're not going to double in the volume or it's not going to be flat as for steaming milk for latte. So you have to get that right balance where you have the thickness of the milk. But again, when you're pouring that perfect latte art, you need that froth. So basically, latte art is made from milk form. But the difference is this milk form is called microform. It's very small bubbles. It even doesn't look as bubbles. Because the main thing, these bubbles are small and it's whole together because of, because of the protein of the milk. So at this point, if you're thinking what's the most important component of milk to get your froth right, most of you maybe is thinking in the fat percentage. No, the answer is the protein percentage. So how much protein you have in the milk, it's very vital to get your froth or the texture right. So you need the right uh, protein content to get a perfect frothy milk. So, but the fat, percent, uh, fat percentage, it plays an important role as well. So what the fat adds to the milk, when you froth or when you steam, once it's done, once it mixed with the coffee, the fat, what will be giving the mouthfeel of the drink, that what will give that shine to the milk and fat will help the coffee and milk proteins to hold together. So the fat contain is important as well when it comes to the mouthfeel and folding all those uh, characters together. And let me add you one more point. If you working on hot techniques, whereas frothing, steaming, or texturing. The most important part is the protein. And fat is OK to hold together. But if you're working in a cold application, you don't want fat in your milk. So if you're working on a cold form application, what works better is skim milk. So basically, skim milk has 0% fat. 
So, but it has that perfect balance between the protein and the fat. So in a cold application, the skim milk make perfect form of froth. If you're making your ice cappuccinos, ice lattes with a nice layer of cold form. So always if you're using a cold application, use skim milk and for hot milk or frothing steaming, the perfect milk is the full fat milk. So now we'll be going to our first poll and second poll. And after that, we'll have a short break. So first, we'll go for our first poll. Let's see uh, how you have answered your questions. Can you see the poll on your screen, Gihan? Yes. Can you see the there. poll? Yeah. I see it, yes. OK, so, so majority are going up. to 65, yes. It's still loading. It's neck to neck. Not really. Okay. Not so. Really. Our first question <laughs> was, yeah. Uh, what's the perfect temperature for milk-based beverages? So there's a problem with the skin. Okay. 60 to 65 percent was the first answer. 88 percent have answered as 60 to 65. Then our second answer was 85 to 95 percent have marked that as the right answer. The third answer was 90 to 96, 5%, and above 70 is zero. So the correct answer is between 60 and 65, and 89% got it right. Well done. So 88, 89% of you will always get your drink perfectly right, but has the perfect flavors. And now we'll be going to our second poll, and I can see the questions are loaded, and you have start answering them. Everyone's got it right this time. Wow. No, no it's spoke. going down. It's going down. Yes, yes, yes. So we have the answers over 20, zero. Uh, over 27, zero. Over 37, 7%. Seven and over 85 percent have answered the correct answer what's over 70 yeah so as i said you should never exceed 70 celsius because it burn all the proteins and the fats and the minerals of the milk so it's not giving that right balance or the mouth feel to your drink so most of you have got your answers right and now we'll be going for a shorter break just 60 seconds and we'll join back again okay. Now what we're going to do is in this half, we're going to go uh, touch the coffee machine and we're going to see whatever I explain and describe on the proper action, how it works. So we'll be using the frothing technique and I'll show you how to make the perfect traditional Italian cappuccino. So let's move to the coffee machine. So thank you, Faisan, for following me. So at this point, one you need a nice clean empty milk jug. And if you see, I have some cloths here. So let me explain why the reason I have a cloth top of the coffee machine. So when you frothing steaming milk, you use always the steam arm. So this steam arm, you can froth in different types of milk. It can be a plant-based milk, it can be cow's milk, it can be camel milk. So what happened when you frothing steaming milk, there can be certain aromas or some particles of the milk stays in your steam. 
mum. So you don't want to contaminate your milk. One, it can have the flavor of cow's milk in a soya milk or almond milk. Or the other thing is the aroma. Milk is very uh, delicate. So if you have cow's milk in your soya milk, you're going to really smell that. Or oh, this is not smelling as normal. So you have to make sure that you purge and wipe the steam mum all the time before and after. So one reason is that. And the other reason is a lot of people are very uh, particular and concerned about the allergens. People have a lot of allergens these days. So uh, it can be nut allergens. It can be lactose allerg uh, intolerance. So to make sure that no one is going to be allergic from your milk, what you make. So you have to make sure you purge and wipe the steam up all the time. So everyone get that perfect cup of coffee and they can come to you and trustly have the drinks. Always purge and wipe as a barista. So that's my purge and wipe. And now I have a nice clean milk jug. And now I'm going to collect some milk. So I have put my milk into the ice. You can see it so it's nice and cool it's in the perfect temperature so now i'm going to add one third of my jug so let me show it very quickly to you so if you come near faisal you can see it's not half it's less Yeah, so you can see it's right below the spout. So if you look from outside somewhere here. So that's the perfect amount of milk. And now I'm going to stop my milk. I'll purge it again. I'll insert my steamer. And if you see it's slightly one centimeter below the surface of the milk. So when you're farting, what you want to hear is you want to hear that chirping sound. So that means you're adding enough air inside the milk. So to get that right froth, the milk start coming up. What you do is slightly take the jug down. But make sure you don't upset your milk. And if you see, that's my thermometer. So milk is perfect. It's good. Now I purge and wipe my steam arm again. Done. I leave my milk in the side. And now I'm going to take my shots so now when you mixing coffee and milk together another important area is your coffee to milk ratio so according to the size of your cup you have to choose how many shots of espresso you're going to add so i'm working with around 150 to 180 ml cup so i'll be using only one shot of coffee to make my cappuccino so i'll press my double shot button and it dispenses the coffee. So that's my 18 grams. First step, if you remember, distribute your coffee. Second step, I'm um, step, I'm sure you remember. Tamp, twist, and give a slight twist, and make sure you wipe your rim. Now we'll go for immediate extraction of my coffee. And while my coffee is extracting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bang and swirl my milk. So maybe you're wondering why I bang and swirl. So if you look at the milk inside, the milk have settled down now. So you see it's dry. So what you have to do is you have to make sure your milk and foam is mixed together. So what you do is you swirl your jug. So you make sure that milk and froth is mixed together. So you get a nice texture of the milk. It start looking more shiny. It start looking more glossy so that's the consistency you're looking to make a perfect cappuccino so now i'll take my coffee i'll swirl it around making a cappuccino is very easy so you take your jug, a cup do a slight angle take your jug keep your jug here and pour it straight away and you have your perfect cappuccino so now We'll go to our main table and we'll see how a cappuccino should look like. So in a traditional Italian cappuccino, you're looking for one third coffee, one third milk, one third foam. So if you look at this cappuccino, you see a nice 
golden ring in the uh, top of the coffee. So that means there's a very good espresso underneath the form. And if you see, there's free from bubbles. There's no more, uh, no bubbles at all. It's it's really glossy and it's really shiny. And next, what we're going to look is if it has the right percentage of form. So you look at one third. So in this cup, roughly around two centimeters form, what you're looking for. And your form should look like shaving form. So it should be nice and glossy. So if you see, look, there's no large bubbles at all. And it's look like melted ice cream. So look, that's the consistency what you're looking for in a cappuccino. So that's about the look. And now let's see how it tastes. So So, it's in the right temperature, it's perfect. So, it has that perfect balance between the coffee, there's milk there, it, it has that nice fully mouthfeel. It, it really, the coffee comes under the milk and you feel that nutty flavors of the coffee. You get those popcorn flavor of the coffee and it, it has a perfect combination. It's Milk is there, but with the milk, always that coffee flavor is coming in. So this is a perfect drink to have in the morning to wake you up. There's milk, but straight away there's coffee as well. So you enjoy the drink with the right flavor. So a cappuccino is best to drink soon as it's made because you don't want to drink a cappuccino what the milk and form have settled down. So when you're drinking a cappuccino, the milk and the form and the coffee all should be coming together. But if your cappuccino have stayed for some time, what's going to happen is your coffee milk and the form is going to separate. And when you try to drink the coffee, coffee, what happens only the milk and the coffee comes and the foam just stays in the up. So cappuccino is best to drink soon as it's made before the milk and the coffee settle down. So that's the cappuccino. If you have any questions, please send it to us and I'll be answering you end of the session. So now we're moving to make our Second drink, or we're going to discuss about our uh, second technique. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, steam our milk. So this technique is uh, basically used for cafe lattes and uh, if you're making hot chocolate. So technique is very simple. The amount of milk you will ta be taking, it will be the same as before. We take one third. I'm going to put my milk back to my eyes so it will not drop the temperature. Purge and wipe. And now, so the difference on steaming is when I'm frothing my steam arm was always just one centimeter below the surface. So if the milk, coffee, milk was there, my steam arm was there. So now this time what will happen is my steam arm will go slightly more to the bottom. So slightly more deeper. You don't want the milk to come up. So before when I was frothing, when the milk was coming up, I was taking my jug down. But here what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hold my jug in one area or my steam arm in one place. I'm going to stand my ground. I will not let the milk come up. I will just let the milk stay in the same area and hit the right temperature. Just purge it again. It's nice. So. So if you see, I'm not taking my jug down. What I'm doing is I'm taking my jug up. I'm not giving the milk space to rise. I'm trying to control the milk in the same amount. So that's my right temperature. If you see again, my steam arm uh, temperature probe, it says it's the right temperature. Now I'll wipe and steam uh, again. So cafe latte, it's made in different ways in uh, different parts of the world. But I like to do, again, the traditional latte, what a lot of people enjoy in a nice glass. So when you're making a drink in a glass, always the glass should be the right temperature. Glasses drop temperature much faster than the cup. So always it's good to give a nice rinse. So the glass will come to the right temperature and it will not shock the coffee. So I'll leave my glass with hot water in the side and I will 
dispense my coffee shots. So again, latte is a very milky light coffee. So most of the people who got into coffee habits, they started with a latte because latte has a very nice milk flavor with followed by some delicate coffee flavor. So it's always nice to have a drink what has very delicate flavor. So in a latte as uh, flavors, you will get some uh, buttery notes, some white chocolate notes, some hints of vanilla. Again, but it depends on the coffee you use. So calorie wise, flat, uh, latte has slightly more calories comparing to the cappuccino. The reason is latte has slightly more milk than a cappuccino because if you remember cappuccino has one third coffee, one third milk, one third form. So form doesn't count exactly as milk. But in a latte, what happens is there's plenty of milk with just one shot. So for a latte, I'll be using one shot as well. So that's my shot, what's ready. So to make this drink, before if you saw, when I was making the cappuccino, straight away I went for a bang swirl. I wanted my milk and froth to mix up. I wanted to have that glossy texture. I wanted it to have that perfect uh, combination of milk and froth so I can get that froth right in my cup. But in the latte, what I do is I let my milk settle down. I don't bang swirl. I'm just going to pour my milk, leaving two centimeters from the rim. And I'll explain you why I'm doing that very shortly. So if you see, I'm gently pouring, pouring my milk, leaving two centimeters from the top. So that's my two centimeter mark. And now if you see, I'm banging and swirling my milk. Why I'm doing this now, I want a little bit of froth in my latte. So I'm going to add one centimeter of froth into my glass. And now if you see, I have one centimeter left. I left that centimeter for my coffee shot. So what I do is I go and just pour my shot right in the middle. So that's how a classic flat, uh, Cafe latte should look like. So now I'll bring it to the main table and I will discuss how it should look like and then I'll taste and we'll see how it is. So we're done with the cappuccino. So this can go out. And now we to the latte. So latte we serve in a slightly taller glass. So when you're serving in a drink in a taller glass, it's always better to have some grip underneath the sauce. So what I do is I use a tissue. It holds. You can always serve with a long uh, spoon. And visually, uh, if you look, like it has a nice consistent color. So from up to down in the same color, it has the perfect mix of coffee and milk together. And if you come to the upper part, you see a perfect one centimeter form and you have a nice coffee drop in the center of the drink. So what's special about this drink is, all the flavors and the aroma right now, it's locked inside the drink. Sorry for the interruption again. We working internet. This happens sometimes. So if you see your skin buffering, please have some patience. So we was in the latte. So we was into the part of top. We was talking about the one centimeter form. So all the aromas and the flavors right now, it's locked in. So all the flavors will release only once you break through your one centimeter form. So if I grab my latte and if I taste it. So flavor wise comparing to the cappuccino, it has more sweet notes because there's more milk in the drink. It has those buttery notes. It has some white chocolate flavor. It has some vanilla flavor. So 
it's it's very palatable it's very light in your palate it's very nice to uh, drink so even if you are not a hardcore coffee drinker this will be the perfect drink to start with and if you find it still a bit too much for you it's always nice with a shot of caramel or vanilla it blends very well and it 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 uh, it's a perfect way to enjoy that coffee with milk so now we're going to our final technique for today where we describe about uh, texturing milk so we'll see how to texture the milk and we'll do a uh, latte art as well so it's not very difficult uh, the tools what we use it will be we use a milk jug we use cool milk again same amount no different it's slightly less than half and slightly more than one third so technique wise what's different here is i'm not frothing the milk i'm not steaming the milk so texturing is a uh, middle between frothing and steaming so when i'm starting exactly i will start as frothing but immediately i will move into steaming method so what i do is i start my steam arm up and once i hear that chirping noise i will get my steam arm down under the milk purge and steam remain the same there's no change so purge wipe then milk temperatures again same anything from 60 to 65 celsius should never reach 70 so i will insert my steam arm in i will open my steam and now i go a slight angle and I don't let the milk come up. I stay in the middle, letting the milk circulate around my jug, creating a whirlpool effect. And once it hits the right temperatures, I off my steam. I'll leave my milk in the side. I'll purge and wipe again. So now my milk is ready. Now, when it comes to number of shots, there's a slight difference in my uh, flat white. So this can call flat white or this is where you see the latte are coming in. So here what I do is I use two shots, but I use only short extraction. So I'm extracting only the nectar or the purest part of coffee. I'm not extracting all the three parts of so if you remember our second session, we was talking about acidity, bitterness, and sweetness. So I'm not going to extract any of those bitter notes of the coffee. I'm extracting the purest part. So I'll be looking at around 12, 13 seconds extraction, not more than that. So once you uh, leave the pre-infusion, so I know the machine has a five second pre-infusion. So actually I'm looking for around eight seconds. I'll just leave it inside for now. Shot. Again, everything remains the same. You go for a nice distribution. Give a decent tamping. Yeah, like a firm handshake. A nice twist. Make sure there's no coffee left in your rim. So it will not spoil your gaskets, you can purge your group head and go for extraction. So I'm looking for a short extraction, as I said. And while my extraction is happening, I will start banging and swirling my milk. So if you see, I went for a short extraction. And if you look at the coffee, it's slightly different than the milk short coffee that I use for cappuccino and latte so this is how it happens so very easy i'll go for a very basic design start up yeah you go for a little wiggle push it forward push it forward again and then you finish with a final push so now i'll come to my main table and we'll talk about this drink. So this is how it looks like. So 
So we're done with our cafe latte. Uh, let me do it in this way so you can see it. So I will turn it this side. So you can see it. So it doesn't white as in the cappuccino. So it has a nice balance of brown and white. And you can see that beautiful latte art in the top. So when we're doing a uh, flat white, we're not looking for a lot of froth. We just need a little bit of uh, form just to create that latte art on the So this is a technique what a lot of baristas love doing. And this is a drink where baristas always can show their skills and what they Welcome back. Sorry for the interruption again. Uh, we have some uh, technical difficulties. We're trying to cope up. So going back to the, uh, the flat white, so if you see there's not much of form. There's a nice balance between the brown and the white, and you see a nice latte art in the top. So taste-wise, let's see how it tastes. So if you remember, I used two shots, but I use only a short extraction where I extracted the sweet part and the acidity of the coffee or the nectar or the purest part of the coffee. It's a very short extraction. So I have combined that with my textured milk. So it will give that perfect roundness between coffee and milk. It will still have that rich coffee flavor, but with the perfect mouthfeel of that textured milk. So let me see if I'm right. So yeah, definitely there it was had more rich coffee flavor than a latte. It was not uh, into that lighter side where I got more of uh, buttery and vanilla. Nice rich coffee flavor. I was hitting those uh, notes of uh, nuts where I. Uh, met, uh, saw in the cappuccino, so there's a lot of nutty characters there. There's some uh, spice notes. There's uh, some uh, dark chocolate notes. So in a, in the latte, you was getting more like white chocolate uh, uh, notes, but here it's slightly more into the dark chocolate side, where you have two shots of coffee, short extraction, the perfect combination of the milk and coffee, but has a well balanced thick one, has more rich coffee flavor. So this is another uh, drink to have in the morning if you are a coffee lover where I will give you that perfect balance between coffee and milk. So now we're going to our third poll and let's see uh, how you have done with the answers. So our question was uh, what component of the milk makes forming easier or better quality form. So it's loading up. So we have 0% uh, have said lactose and fat and protein is having a very tough fight. So it went off. So yeah, so we have the answers load in. So 45% of you said it's the fat and 57% said it's the protein. So the right answer is protein, what makes uh, easier to froth milk and what holds the milk together or what makes uh, frothing steaming easier is the protein contain of the milk. So a lot of you have answered is right. I'm sure a lot of you had some disturbance uh, where you had to refresh or uh, the line is getting jammed. So sorry if you uh, had any of those uh, issues. So now we're going for our question and answers. So Shinas, uh, do you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Hello? Uh, 
Yes, Gian. Can yeah. you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, I hear so you. Aria says, yeah, Aria says that uh, if uh, you, you had mentioned that it's difficult to get a good froth from soya milk, right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, okay. Aria uses oat milk. You cannot use okay. oat milk. So what is the option? Okay. What is the This is option? one part I uh, can touch on. So when you go to buy milk in uh, a place, you will find the regular milk. Uh, what you use for like all-purpose plant-based milk and there's something called barista professional so if you finding difficulties on uh, frothing plant-based milk what happens normally go for the barista professional there was there's a lot of uh, suppliers out there there's a lot of manufacturers they manufacture barista professional uh, plant-based milk what really works well when you frothing and steaming so don't buy the regular milk plant-based milk look for a barista professional uh, plant-based milk option what will really give the perfect uh, texture and the froth to your drink. So I hope that answers the question. Yes, and uh, Jainti would like you to uh, once again reiterate the temperature before you start frothing and after, I mean after, before you start steaming and after you finish steaming when you make the coffee. What is the perfect okay. temperature? So, Normally, when you frothing, steaming milk, you will be taking milk directly from the fridge. So you're looking at a temperature between anything from two to four Celsius, depends on your fridge without the temperature you have set. So once you froth or steaming, once it's done, you're looking for a temperature, anything from 60 to 65. So far as it doesn't reach 70 Celsius, that's in the right range. But 60 to 65 is perfect. 68 will be slightly in a hotter side. But far as you don't go to that 70 mark, you will still enjoy the coffee with that perfect nutritional values what you want to have from the milk. So I Do learned something. Any more questions. I learned something. You know, I always complain that the coffee is too cold when it comes. And now I know why. Okay. Because you have to be below that 70 mark. Yeah, I keep wondering yes. why the machine is calibrated like that. Now I know. Uh, yes. uh, uh, okay, perfect. That's all. Those, the, uh, that's all the questions, I think. Yes. Yes, and Arya, is a bit, so. and Arya is a bit concerned that you might get super high on caffeine if you keep drinking all that coffee, like I told you last time. Okay, good. So <laughs> it's very hard to have a caffeine overdose. So to have a caffeine overdose, you should have anything between six to seven grams of coffee. So that means you should be drinking at least 150 to 200 cups of coffee a day. So it's it's very hard to have a caffeine overdose. So don't worry. <laughs> so maybe you're drinking around five, six cups of coffee a dose a day. So that's not going to do any harm. So don't worry. Yeah. Okay. So you can. You can sign yeah. off. Now. So. Uh, Thank you very much for joining us today. We had some technical difficulties. I hope you will understand. And uh, next week, uh, we have our next episode, what we'll uh, communicate to uh, you very shortly. And thank you very much for joining again. And it's over to you, uh, Shanas. Thank you, Gihan. That was truly educational. And like I always say, if you want to become good at something, you need to spend at least 10,000 hours at it. And uh, an education is a good place to start. Uh, thank you also, uh, Karun, for being with us on your st in spite of your staycation. I hope you're enjoying yourself. And over to you, Karun. Thank you, Shanaz. Um, yes, very much. Uh, in, in, in fact, if you see me, I'm in my hotel room here. And you know, I'm really enjoying <laughs> Uh, the weather um, absolutely great and um, of course you know we'll be back to office next week <laughs> thank you again gihan for this uh, wonderful session uh, just you know very inciting uh, you know techniques uh, behind each of this uh, you know coffee based um, you know milk based coffee beverages and for those who missed out on the complete live action and email will soon follow with the replay video of this webinar together with the handouts as well lastly we encourage you to showcase your uh, techniques as well in terms of the coffee skills and beverages and share them on your social media platforms by tagging Gihan underscore at ICA Dubai and of course at ICA Dubai as well. 
we look forward to seeing you in the next session next week until then goodbye from all of us here